Hi, this is Lori Power, Director of Evangelization and Discipleship at Christ the Redeemer Parish, and welcome to Talking Saints. I'm here today with my co-host, Pete Sanchez, reporter for the Catholic Star Herald. How are you doing today, Pete? I'm doing wonderful. Lori, how are you today? Doing great. I'm excited to talk about this uh, saint today, though he's kind of kind of different than our the usual people we've been talking about. He is. I don't even know if we can technically infallibly call him a saint, right? <laughs> that is true. I just so. learned that. So today is July 4th, and it also happens to be the feast day of Blessed Pere Giorgio Frassati. So he is a blessed. He is not quite at the level of being canonized a saint yet, um, but he is such a fantastic example for all of us. We wanted to talk about him today. He's somebody I'm very excited to. Somebody I, I don't know about you, Lori, but I've had a devotion to him for the past couple of years, and just uh, excited to share the life of this young man, this 20th century man who is such a contemporary. I mean, he only he he, did, he passed away not a hundred years ago. It's true. So and and started off, Lori. What what can you uh, what can we say? We he was born in Italy. He right? was he was born in Turin. Um, in 1901, uh, his mother Adelaide was a painter, and his father Alfredo was the founder and director of the newspaper La Stampa. So he's very influential in Italian politics. Um, so his mother, I think, was more the devout uh, Catholic in the family, and his father, we believe, at least when Pier Giorgio was growing up, may have been agnostic or was not practicing his faith. Um, so that's sort of where how he started in life. Um, he joined a Marian sodality and apostleship of prayer. So sodalities are really just groups of young people that would gather and pray together. And he actually obtained permission to receive daily communion, which at that time was quite rare. So um, he had devotion from a very young age to the Eucharist and to Jesus. Even so, I mean, and that's, that's rare. Not only could he obtain it, but being of that young age to desire that that's true is something yeah. he's such a man as Laura you said he grew up in a uh, in a cultured upper class society and one of my affinities for him he loved the literature and the arts yes and another thing he he really loved to ski and hike the mountains and the uh he just and he started I love this we talked about this he he was very close with his friends. He was very fun-loving. He liked to tell jokes, practical jokes. Um, hopefully he told bad jokes, too, or puns that I'm, I'm a fan <laughs> of. I don't know, though. Perhaps. Um, but he formed the, the Shady Characters Society uh, with seven of his closest friends during, well, I don't want to say his young years, because all his years were young. That's true. He but died he, very young. He, um, the goal of this society was to keep their friendship alive. Even uh, even throughout, you know, when, when things would change for all of them. And these members socialized, skied, they climbed mountains, told jokes. But really for him, uh, the ultimate purpose of the Shady Character Society, despite the awesome name, was really to be united in prayer. Because he felt prayer was the highest form of solidarity. And as you'll see later on, you know, he had more of... Uh, one of the things one of the things he always said uh he he always would have he'd write uh he'd write down in, in postscripts uh verso lauto toward the heights which meant basically you know he 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 not toward toward the heights for the highest mountain but also closer to god mm. closer to god to reach to do your best and he did that through prayer. He did that through the Eucharist and through charity. Right, Lori? That is true. So uh, I believe at a fairly young age, he joined the St. Vincent de Paul Society, became a Vincentian, and really like, his love for the poor was evident throughout much of his life. Um, there's a story that he gave uh, everything he had to the poor. He even would use his bus fare and then he would uh, give it to the poor and then run home to be home on time for meals with his family. So a lot of his charity work, his family didn't even know about it. It was incredible. And then he had an opportunity, I think, to uh, go on vacation with his family to their summer home. And he said, well, if everybody leaves Turin, who will take care of the poor? So it was something yeah. that was always on his mind. He would even give up a vacation to um, be with the poor. And I believe he once said that um, Jesus comes to me every day in communion in the Eucharist. And so I must bring him to the poor. 
so, something it's powerful it is powerful and i think for somebody like me now who can get inundated with i wake up i put on sports radio or i uh, i put on music or and then you know during the day going throughout listening to podcasts or watching uh, Stranger Things, which comes out today, <laughs> July 4th. Um, okay. I think, you know, I realized that I should probably pray more. And for Sadi, Pierre Giorgio is such a wonderful person to for me to emulate because I just feel like his, his mind was on greater things. His heart was on greater things. And he just, I think there was even a story about him uh, waking up in the middle of the night and he tied a he tied a rope from his bedroom window to the ground and went to mass or went to adoration like late at night in the middle of the night and then came back and got back in bed before his parents even knew he was gone wow. so he would spend hours at the, in front of the eucharist in front of the sacrament and like you said i love that you know he he didn't go on vacation because he thought hey um if i go who's going to take care he really saw himself as such a uh, he he's perceived that he had a mission for oh, the absolutely Lord. absolutely he even uh once talked about his three apostolates which i wanted to share a little bit about so his spirituality was really based um on devotion to the eucharist and to our lady um so he would of course pray the rosary and as you said spend time in eucharistic adoration but he um talked to other young people about the three apostolates of being a a Christian. And his first was the apostolate of good example. So as Catholics, we have to, really have to strive um, to allow our whole lives to be guided by you know the Christian moral law, to live as Jesus wants us to and as he lived. And then, of course, the apostolate of charity. Um, he would meditate frequently on um, St. Paul's hymn to charity, which is uh, 1 Corinthians 13, and really desire to live that out to, you know, bring comfort to those who suffer and to care for those who are um, just in distress. So the apostolate of good example of charity and then the apostolate of persuasion. Um, And he thought this was one of the most beautiful and most necessary. So you would always always find him having fun with friends. But um, I remember reading a story like he would play a game of like billiards with some people that he was in school with and he said if I win you have to come to mass with me things like that so it was always you know he was always trying to pull people with them to cry with him to Christ so um, he really lived out those three apostolates beautifully I love that example that's something you know if, if I uh Maybe I should do that when I make bets. My sister and I made a bet on Survivor recently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Survivor winner. Um, but I don't know. She does go to Mass every Sunday. So maybe if I made it with more of a, a friend of mine who doesn't really, you know, that might that might be a, a good example to have. There you for, go, right? And, but also, I think after every climb, he would make it a point to go to the Blessed Sacrament. Mm-hmm. And he invited friends to do that. But I love you're talking about the persuasion because he wrote a lot to friends and family. And I actually have a wonderful book. Uh, it's called Letters to His Friends and Family. That's by St. Paul's Press. And it is uh, he is really one of the, uh, I'll just read you a bit of the little piece that he wrote to his friend Isidoro Bonini. Here, Pierre Giorgio says, Every day I understand better what a grace it is to be Catholics. Poor, unlucky those who don't have a faith. To live without a faith, without a patrimony to defend, Without a steady struggle for the truth is not living, but is just getting along. We must never just get along, but live. Because even through every disappointment, we should remember that we are the only ones who possess the truth. We have a faith to sustain, a hope to attain. Our homeland. And Mm -hmm. that is... Because That's beautiful. His, I mean, his eyes he, on heaven. So. He really did, and he passed away. Really, he he had just completed, I think, his uh, engineering degree. He was going to be, uh, yeah, he just before receiving his university degree in mining engineering, he contracted polio mm. in nineteen twenty four. I think right early, early twenty five. Yeah, twenty five when he died. Yeah, and it was the circumstances were pretty sad because his family was focused on his grandmother who was also dying at that time. Um, and they really didn't notice how sick he was. They didn't, didn't realize that, um, you know, this was really terminal for him. And I think there's even a story of his mother, like sort of reprimanding him for not helping with 
the grandmother, but he himself experienced like paralysis and it, it just ravaged his body very quickly. Um, and then he ultimately did die on July 4th, of 1925. Yeah. And even, even to death, he was thinking of others because right. there's a story yes. on the day before he died, his hand was paralyzed from polio and he asked his sister, Luciana, his younger sister, who he, whom he was very close to, he said, you know, take, take, uh, something from my jacket and, uh, it was an injections for a poor person he knew, and he uh, he wanted to help. E- even in his final days, he was still thinking of others. He couldn't do it, um, but he, and this is what he said. He, he said that uh, the day of my death will be the most beautiful day of my life, mm. and his funeral... Uh, he, I think his family didn't know the impact that his... Exactly, yeah. Thousands of the poor came out for his funeral, and they they were shocked to see all these people that he had been helping for years. I mean, I think he joined the St. Vincent de Paul Society when he was about 17, and then died at 24. So for those seven years, he really poured himself out for the poor. I mean, that is... What is it, that phrase? It's cliche, but it's not the... It's not the years in the life, but it's the life in the years. Mm. And he's so... In those 24 years... I mean, he lived a lot, and it, he's a, quite a remarkable person. And he's blessed, but we have, uh, we'll talk a bit. I, I think there's just, what is it, the Frisati Society now? Yes. There's How, how can people, and it has, I, mean, I guess he has one miracle. You said Correct, right that's now. how he's beatified, yes. So the, the process typically for towards canonization um if uh, right from the beginning people recognize sort of the holiness of an individual, their local diocese will start to investigate their life. And if they do see heroic virtue, um, they will be, that will be forwarded on to Rome. And if, if there's approval there, they become venerable. And then um, they start looking for miracles that happen through their intercession. And if one is approved, that's when a person would be beatified. So at this point, Pierre Giorgio has one miracle and would need an additional miracle that is approved for his canonization, which is the recogni- recognizing that he is indeed in heaven and is a saint. So and that is it. And well, one last thing. Can I, Laura, you're going to read the prayer. Sure. But I just, I just want to mention, uh, we talked about he's not a saint, but a saint John Paul II uh, did invoke him in uh, in a few places. Yes, I think at his his beatification, he said he's indeed a man of the eight beatitudes. Yes, he lived yes. the beatitudes. So another saint was pointing out his holiness. <laughs> I think we exactly. can trust that as a he's a beautiful example, mm-hmm. especially for young people. I mean, he only lived twenty four years, but look what he accomplished in that short twenty four years. Um, there's a couple other things we didn't even mention. He was a third order Dominican. Um, so he, there was a certain commitment to prayer each day that he would have had as a third order Dominican. Um, he was part of, um, like the uh, Italian sort of Catholic worker movement. So really looking for the rights of those. That's why he went into engineering because he wanted to work closely with the miners that were not far from his hometown to really, um, make sure that their rights were preserved. So incredible amount of, um, just incredible what he accomplished in such a short time. You yeah, what a witness for the faith and for somebody like John Paul II to recognize his uh, holiness mm-hmm. is something. And I That's think true. it's something, it's wonderful because you yourself in the Diocese of Camden here, uh, the youth ministry has had these beautiful uh, uh, stands, I guess, or images. Images of young saints. And yeah. one of them is Blessed uh, Pierre Giorgio. And you've used it for retreats, right? Yes. Yes, we have. And he's also been a patron of World Youth Day. So um, people are becoming more aware of him. But a beautiful example for us. And another thing that people who knew him said, he was just full of joy. Um, He had said that it's it's sort of unchristian not to be to be joyful (laughs) and that was i he seemed like the kind of person that like everyone would want to be friends with i think you know if he was if we were alive then i think i would would be drawn to him don't you agree well he he was a good looking guy i can't (laughs) lie i mean that's that's the he's always he's pretty much depicted and we were talking about this earlier uh, there's images of him with uh, he has a walking stick because he liked to climb, mm-hmm. and he had uh, his, he liked a to pipe ski in his mouth. too. Yeah, yep. he liked to and ski, yep. and great. he's joyful. And something I read recently, but the, the difference between joy and happiness. I think there's a lot of things out there, you know, the secrets to happiness, but joy is so much different. Joy is 
finding peace within whatever happens Mm -hmm. in your day and being, you know, I guess having hope that God is with you. At least that's, I I think I pray for joy that I pray for the joy that guiding joy. Yeah. Pierre Giorgio had. And also I've, um, I'm fortunate I haven't climbed too many mountains. There's a few (laughs) that I have. And I think, uh, it's beautiful because you do see, and it, there's just something spiritual too about getting out in nature. Mm, and that's you true. do, you, he you, felt like he was closer to God the higher he went. The exactly, and he that's, could just contemplate see, the beauty of the what the Creator gave us. So, so maybe that's what we should do. We should get out in nature, contemplate God, and uh, spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and also. Uh, help help the poor help the poor mm, and he's absolutely. a great example for all those things that's true and another interesting fact um, his body was moved in 1981 to the cathedral in Turin and he was found to be incorrupt so that's also interesting what does to, that mean Lord? Uh, his body did not decay as it typically would and that's so. that ha- that has happened for, a for few other saints, right? no, yes a number of saints and that's yes. a sign of their holiness I guess I would think so, that God, okay. yeah, preserved their bodies from typical corruption. Yes. Yeah. Um, but that's not necessarily something that we would use to for his cause, but it's just interesting. No. I just find that interesting. Like, wow. Yeah, that a might recent, be. Someone who died recently in corrupt. That might be another longer topic we can have, talk about the incorrupt saints. Yes. Because that's, uh, that's something I'm fascinated in. And, uh, well, Lori, can you read, how about we read the prayer I'm for praying. the canonization a blessed, blessed Frasati. Yes. O merciful God, who through the pearls of the world deigned to preserve by your grace your servant, Per Giorgio Frasati, pure of heart and ardent of charity, listen, we ask you to our prayers, and if it is in your designs that he be glorified by the church, show us your will, granting us the graces we ask of you through his intercession, by the merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed Per Giorgio Frasati. Pray, Pray for, for us. us.